Hey, what's going on, everybody? Oh, see, she's got stuff in bags laying around now. We're in a blazer. Shaking a little bit. I'll give you a rolling blazer update and yakking. commented on my blazer video that I haven't had a yak and a driving video in a while. No, I have not. I used to like doing those going into work, but I've been, well, number one, I've been slacking on stuff. And the work schedule's been going a little hectic. But, uh... this thing into Snohomish. And we're going to go hit the Napa in Snohomish because we don't have one here in Lake Stevens. We're going to see what we can find for a new speedometer drive gear so I get the speedometer reading correctly. yesterday and yak with them for a few minutes. They don't carry them. If you recommend to try and nap them, they may still have stuff like that. I looked around online and I could find a real confusing formula, but I couldn't make head or tails out of what it was trying to do. Because it's asking you... I think it's asking you what your current tooth count is on the gear and then what your tire diameter is, and blah, 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 and you do a little formula, and it's, I don't know if it's trying to tell you the, the new one or what. So we're just going to pop up there and just see what they got. There's got to be a, a, a dealership listing or something, you know, for an 89 K5 with 373 gears and 31 inch tall tires. This is the tooth you need. 35 mile an hour, I'm about 5 miles an hour off. So. But uh, the Blazer's been doing real good. Driven it a few times here in the last, uh, since I did the U joint repair. Old Air Force truck. It drives pretty nice. Jeez. Just right up on the curb. Wait 20 seconds for people to move. Take your sweet time there, Slick. But, uh, yeah, it's been doing good. No wibbly wobbly, no shaky, baky stuff. Just cruising real nice and smooth. A couple of clunks from various loose things in the back, like the tailgate. anything with tune-up or oil change or anything but it's got oil in it so we're gonna keep running her for a little bit <coughs> I've got the plugs and cap and rotor no wires I'm probably gonna put in place with wires just for the simple fact that they are red and I don't really care for the red wires I'll go back to black or gray so we'll get a set of wires for it sometime not right now remember but I tried doing the uh, fuel filter last year that failed because of the uh, dual exhaust 
rust on this truck. Can't get my wrench in to get the filter off on the other side. That's where I discovered that I got a busted bolt on the manifold. Well, crawling under there the other day and looking at everything, those pipes are just about shot. They're real flaky, big chunks of rust coming off. God, that's going to be expensive to do two sets of pipes, two mufflers. And I got to thinking, why do I need two pipes? I yeah, put it on the 84, but I'm not real pleased with it. Why not just go back to a single exhaust on this truck? So I started shopping around. I can get a factory style Y pipe. I think they're about 85 bucks, brand new. Could go to the junkyard and get one. Master Force 2 3 inch cat back single muffler single ex exit uh, exhaust system. They're under 300 bucks. I lot like Flowmaster. I'd love to put a Flowmaster on this thing. I don't need dual exit, it's not a high performance motor. So, I really don't like duals on these trucks. I like my duals straight out the back. I don't like the side exit. I don't like it when they go straight out the back on these trucks because the bumpers. Hang a little low, so you see a lot of extra pipes sitting back there. So, I think we're just going to do a single pipe. Go for the three inch, probably just a uh, straight pipe where the cat would go. It's going to be a little bit louder in that respect. Get this thing starting to sound like the old uh, 94 used to. bit of money coming from YouTube the end of this month. That should almost cover half of the parts. Figured it'd be close to 400, a little over 400 bucks with shipping. So You guys are going to help pay for it. Other than that, need a windshield still. Haven't done anything with that. That'll be probably next on the list. Once that exhaust is done, I can go ahead and change out that fuel filter. Maybe part of the rough idle issue it's got. Right, it does drive nice though. Might not be quite as loud inside with the mufflers. talking to a guy on Craigslist last couple days about a push bumper for this thing. One of those brush guards. Not the full width, full face kind, but just the one that goes in the center. I've been thinking of putting one on this truck just to break up the front end a little bit. Just kind of a flat front end on it. And my old 84 Chev, I like it because it's got that winch bumper on there. on it or anything, so I thought, well, let's just put a brush guard on it. Yeah, it'll be good. But, I'm trying to find one, and find one that they don't want an arm and a leg for. It's kind of like when I was looking for this truck. He thinks they're worth way more than they actually are. So I found this one that I uh, was emailing the guy about. It's uh, off a Dodge, 90's Dodge. Uh, it should work. If not, should be able to make it work. And it was 35 bucks is what he was asking. It's chrome, which I'd rather just have painted, but so many people want chrome, shiny stuff on the rigs. I probably just do the bad thing for the environment and grind all the chrome off and spray paint it black. Bad idea, so broaden my search a little. 
always build one for that much. I saw this one for 35 the other day. I thought, hey, it's more. But on that note, I was supposed to meet the guy this morning. I told him to let me know place and time. I haven't heard from him. So no idea what's going on there, and I'm not going to pursue it any more than I already have. Who's really interested in selling, he'll contact me. I gave him my phone number, I gave him my email, so. Maybe it'll go down tomorrow, I don't know. I was kind of hoping that it would go down today so I could just run into Everett. I was gonna hit that Napa, go get a sandwich, maybe hit the hobby store. My latest train magazine is out. much where we're at on this thing right now. But it goes down the road pretty good. Definitely tell it's a short wheelbase. A little twitchy. That's a lot of traffic up here. Still got no reverse lights. I got the switch here from the old uh, steering column. I looked underneath yesterday for a couple minutes but just couldn't readily spot it so I don't know if it's on top or if it's buried. Hope I don't have to drop the column back now just to get to it. But if I do, I do. Today I'm not going to worry about it too much. It's supposed to be raining off and on. Tomorrow is supposed to be fairly nice, especially in the afternoon. pressure washer out yesterday and I blasted this thing real good. Got all the scuzz off of it. And then I filled a bucket with soapy water. Scrubbed her down by hand. Got her looking pretty darn good. There's quite a few rust spots on it though I need to start addressing. I mean not rotting through to surface rust but give me a can of this dark metallic blue paint. I think I pretty much used up the one I had and I touched up the body damage on the side, just kind of getting rid of the primer marks over there. Eventually I'd like to redo this thing as my dad's truck, but that's not going to be for a long time, so just some rattle can touch up paint will be fine for this thing. Just having it washed was a upgrade. Still going to backdate the front end though. I don't want to get rid of those horizontal headlights. I like the mufflers. I do not like the front end on this truck. I just think they look so goofy with that. I'm trying to make them look like the new trucks but the body is still like the old truck. It just doesn't fit. I know a lot of people like them. They find all that stuff to put it on their own rigs. Not me. Nice smooth brakes. Yeah, it's a good truck.
I get all that exhaust stuff, you can guarantee there'll be more exhausting videos coming up. Here's O'Reilly's Auto Parts. I want to get closer to the old part of town here. Hopefully they can come up with an answer for me. For about a hundred bucks I can buy a whole kit with all the different gears and I don't want to do that because I only need I'm not even sure. So there's a internal like a pinion style gear. And then there's, I don't want to call it a ring gear, but there's an outer gear that teeth on it that spins as well. And there's two of the outer gears to compensate for the different diameters of the inner gears. And there's, I don't know, 10 or 15 different inner gears that you can get. They're all color coded basically. I did the same thing with my, my very first vehicle. It was an 89 Ford F-150. The 300 cubic inch straight six, and I had a C6 transmission, three-speed auto. When I bought the truck, it was on 31 inch tires. It's a two-wheel drive. Stock size was, I think, like a 215. I sold those 31 inch tires to a friend's parents for their K5 Blazer. They had an 89. Actual blazer, not a Jimmy. Not that it matters. But uh, sold them the 31s because they were still in real good shape. And I needed tires for their truck. They took me to Costco and I bought a set of 235 series Kirkland Signature Series car tires for my pickup. But the price was right and I wasn't hauling a lot with it. So I went down to the dealership and got the gear for the 235. That thing had a 273 rear end. That was a long legged truck. I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but a lot of these homes along this road are uh, from the turn of the century. A couple of them are very significant for this region. Iverson House, I guess right there on the right. It, uh, it was a big, big timber barren up in this region. A lot of lumber up in this area. So Napa should be down here on our left. Streets down yet. We make a right and go down one more shot. That's the old original downtown Snohomish people we'll come back that way. Looks like a Napa sign up here. Hopefully they're open. Back in a few, I'll let you know what we come for, what we uh, find out. Alrighty, we're back. Well, that was a bust. So 
is they used to have a book that told you all that stuff. Used to. So anybody out there that used to work at Napa, Napa and maybe has one of those books, let me know. Uh, I could try another Napa, but I have to run all the way into Everett. Maybe this week on my way into work if I don't find anything online. I'd like to say though that damn this is a good looking truck. So I was walking up to it sitting here on the street. We'll uh, let's make a left, go up one street. I'll take you all down old Snohomish. Uh, what was that? I was going to say uh, Is Ispro, I S S P R O. So let's see if they have a website. They may be able to have some information. There is a company that I did come across, so there's a couple of companies that do sell them. Maybe I just need to call them and say, hey, this is what I got. Maybe they can figure it out. If I don't figure anything out on my own this weekend, then Monday I'll give them a buzz. I mean, parts weren't that bad. The gears are under 20 bucks. There's little plastic gears, so... custom body work on this Tahoe. <coughs> Had a cold here a few weeks ago and still packing a little bit. Ah, of course I didn't grab my car wash either. I was going to do that. Just have to go back up to AutoZone. That's the street I wanted right there. Just go down this one. I've taken you guys here before, but it's been a few years. We went to uh, they do a big car show here in the late summer. I've been to it several times. I think I brought you guys at least once. option if the weather holds out today or even tomorrow I could do it. Let's pull this one out and see what I got. That'll give me a stirring point. I gotta go down even more. I don't think it was that far. I'm going the right direction, right? It's, nope, I think that's it right there. I think we're on the back side of I don't spend a lot of time in this town. It is kind of a touristy type joint. Neat, but I guess the street that we were on. I'm gonna watch for pedestrians and people backing up without looking and Downtown Snohomish. Like I said, they do a real good car show here where the streets are all lined with automobiles. Dennis Gage from My Classic Car came up here one year, actually. He stood right beside him. Chatted with him for a, a minute or so. He told me to come find him again and he'd give me some some goodies from the show, but I didn't bother. And 
that was all downtown Snohomish. Uh, you know what? Screw it. Let's go into Everett. Take you all down Lowell River Road again and make a nice long video out of this. Fill up some card time, get you all something to, to watch. So I did videos on all the vehicles this morning to put up a little update, including Cletus. Fired him up yesterday to swap spots with, with the Blazer. That truck impressed the you-know-what right out of me. I haven't run that thing in weeks. Over the Snohomish River right now. But uh, I haven't run that truck in weeks. And yes, it was nice and warm, but... Um, turned the battery switch on, jumped in him, pumped him three or four times, and he lit right off. I mean, it's like I had just jumped out of that truck after driving it hundreds of miles or whatever. It was ready to go. That impressed me. It does smoke from the right side cylinder bank. Ring, just need to run them a little bit more or what the deal is. It's puffing pretty good, so I took them for a run around the block. Put some RPM into the motor a little bit. Shifted through the gears. It is a neat old truck. So I'm gonna run into town and grab a sandwich. And I think we will probably still hit the hobby store. I wasn't going to because I was hoping to hear back from the dude on the bumper, but if I have to come back into town, I have to come back into town. more and more now that it's running and driving good still got a lot of work to do to her but but we're getting there maybe this summer we'll be able to take this thing in the dirt I talked about in that video and you'll see it's uh, 
put the fuel tanks in. I haven't really driven it. Filled up one of the tanks. Well, not filled it, put a few gallons in it. Ran it for a little bit and thought, ah, one of these days I'll get it up to the gas station. But I put ethanol fuel in it. Pretty sure you can see where this is going. When I bought the fuel lines, I asked them, is this ethanol safe fuel line? Oh yeah, that's all we sell anymore. So we're about flatbed. sound clip for something with this throttle body motor and, and the Force 2 exhaust, which I think is a 50 series muffler. Everybody's 
running duels. That's not what I want. I'm not planning to do huge performance mods of this thing, but even if I do, a three inch tailpipe should be opening up enough to flow some good exhaust. Sandwich place first. I think that's going to be the closest, and then we'll work our way back to Highway 2. I'll swing by the hobby shop, get my magazine while I'm in town. That bumper I was looking last at is basically on the other side of the, uh, the Boeing factory where I work. easy jaunt to pop over there. I'm sure dude works some days. So probably wouldn't be able to do it during the week if he contacts me, but eh. like I say, I'm leaving it at his court now. He's got all my contact information. So don't need anything from Harbor Freight. Good on tools. Be a long video for you guys. Yeah, Mark at work. He busted his foot. I had the lights off. They were moving the planes. He had to go run up there and show quality inspector or something, and he stepped on an electrical cord, rolled his foot over, and broke the little bone that runs on the outside of the foot. I guess basketball players do that a lot. It's a pretty fragile bone. It's very common to break, but it's one of the longest healing bones in the body. So he put a boot on it that he had from his wife had one or something, if I remember right. Or no, he went to the doctor. The doctor put him in a boot. And he walked on that. Bro, he rides his bike to work every day getting around okay. It says it hurt to walk, but riding his bike was fine. And then went into the foot doctor, and they said, yeah, it's broken. You're going into a cast. So they told him, no driving a car, because it's his right foot. That's your throttle foot. You can't move the ankle at all. Totally immobilized it. And, uh, so he went back to Boeing Medical to get checked back in like you're supposed to every time you get an injury like that. And Boeing Medical says, okay, no driving for you. Here's an inside parking pass. And he says, I can't drive. How, what am I supposed to do with this? So he was telling me that. And I says, you know what? If you can guarantee that I can get in on your pass, I'll drive you into work. So I pick him up every morning. And drive him home in the evening. It's only a couple minutes from the factory. Probably takes me an additional 10 or 15 minutes out of my day. sandwich. Kind of like Subway, only not as confusing. If you've never had one, I like them. A lot of people don't. I understand it. Well, they don't give you any choices. Well, that's the whole damn point. People have too many choices these days. You walk in there and I want a number or whatever and that's what you get. 
you want lettuce on that, what vegetables, you want salt, pepper, vinegar, blah, blah, blah. So it's not, I want a number whatever, and that's what you get. It's just what we're trying to do. this town. tried one of these before. They are good rigs. He was kind of pissing and moaning about doing the uh, cap and rotor, or distributor, to put a distributor in it. Some Fords are in the front. Good luck with that 94 that I had. I missed that truck. But this is the replacement for it. The Mercedes next to us cranking the music up going to give me a copyright infringement. Got dinged on another one of those here recently. I didn't watch the video, but... Which one it was. It's an older video. It says we're not going to do anything, but any revenue generated from it goes to the copyright claim person or whatever. I passed the turn I really wanted, didn't I? I did. Now we'll just make the turn right here. I should be going back to Kevin's old place. things at that house. Exhaust on his Silverado, that's where we drove the 53 in, that's where he initially parked his fair lane when we drug it up here on that long two-day California trip. Drove all night, got down there, picked up the car, threw it on the trailer in the after that afternoon and turned right around and drove all the way back. Never doing that again, but at least I can say I did it once. That's where 
can the Sterner's Kit Project too. That has been sold, if I haven't mentioned it before to anyone, if you, those of you that are still listening. But he can was building a Knight Rider replica. Did a really nice job on it, but he thought of selling it. Figured he would. He doesn't like keeping stuff. should replace the other three as well. It wouldn't hurt. I know that one forward U-joint on the back drive line was still in decent shape. It wasn't binding, making funny noises or anything. You should get under there and at least check the fronts. I haven't done that yet. Pretty sure the one that I did buy that I didn't take back will work on the front. So if I need one, I should have one. It wouldn't hurt. Just a few bucks. I do need to redo the, at least the driver's side uh, tie rod end. The little rubber boot got ripped up from those giant 22 inch wheels and tires that were on this thing when I bought it. So I need to replace at least one. If you're going to do one, may as well just do the other. And then get her and get it the front end aligned. Like I said, I got things to do. I mean, it steers good now. The steering wheel's off just a hair, not much. Not enough to worry about. But oh, this is a nice driving truck. The steering's a lot tighter than my 84, but my 84 probably needs a lot of bearing work on the front, too. Jimmy John's. Go get me a sandwich and a chocolate chip cookie. We'll do all the other running around. So, back in a flash. Okay, we're back. Let's make sure we're recording there. Oh yeah, we're recording. I've done that before where I think I turned the camera on and I'm actually shutting it off. to start. Not hot or anything, I don't think. Got voltage showing on the deal there. Hope we're not killing the battery. Get home, we'll check the alternator output. Yeah, one other nice thing about this place, as I mentioned, you know, no, uh, no, uh, pretty much no options. What about the turkey and bacon club? The only option it came with was, do you want cheese with that? Said, sure. I don't think I was in there a minute and a half. One gal at the register takes the order. The other gal starts cranking out the sandwich. Nice and quick. After I stayed here, I'm doing 35 on the speedometer, but it's really pushing 40. What's this guy doing? I was thinking about that hard start there, too. It, well, it could be the starter wearing out. Get home, check the the uh, what you call it, the voltage on the charging system. Just see what it's doing. I think I've done that before, and it charges right where it needs to be. Who knows? Other things on this truck. The age of it. It's only money, right? on that 
that turn signal. I guess if I have to crawl underneath there to change out that switch, make it time to take the dash bezel off, put that back in the unit sitting here somewhere. One of the cup holders. Let's see, let's... Let's go straight. A little bit faster. Don't want to bore you guys too much. Oh! Trying to be a nice day though. When I was looking at the uh, hourly weather report last night, it was saying it was pretty much raining all day. damp this morning, but I haven't felt a raindrop yet. Tomorrow, supposedly, after about noon, the sun's supposed to come out. It's supposed to be a really nice weekend, or a nice afternoon, so. Let's hope that's the case. So we're going to backtrack down to Broadway the road that we came up on from Laurel River. Shoot down to the hobby shop, Broadway Hobbies. We'll pick up the latest edition of N Scale Magazine, Tutu Train Magazine. I like that one. It comes out every other month. It's actually a local magazine here in the Northwest. Got any other train magazines that I haven't uh, haven't picked up? There's a couple of them that I get frequently. Is that something I don't do a lot of with you guys? Is the trains? I don't have any layout or anything, but I've been known every once in a while to pull the trains out, and put the track up, and. Also, miniature freight for a couple hours. Felt that clunking through the floor again right there, so. but it was right on this busy road. So thanks, but no thanks. And back under the old blacktop. So now he's got a new playhouse. thing I want to look into on this truck. I'm not going to do it today. But, uh, sometime this summer once the weather stabilizes and dries out a little bit. I want to pull the rear motor out of the tailgate. I, and see what it'll cost to rebuild. There's a place here in Everett that supposedly will do it. G and H Auto Electric is what it is. I haven't talked to them yet about it, but 
I have found that there is now a listing for these. I found one through AutoZone. It's $103 for a new motor. Probably need to redo these window motors on the doors. Here's where we came up off of Lowell River. Over freights to our left. See a little bit of water up ahead there. The pork gardener, I think, is what they call that. But uh, yeah, I need to get that motor in the back fixed. I need to get them all fixed. If that thunking I'm feeling is actually because I got my own every time I feel it, my hand is on the center console. I wonder if it's something sliding around in the center console. This is going to latch it right now. There it goes. Maybe it's nothing loose underneath there. I've crawled under there and looked. I mean, I do have a little bit of play in the transmission mount. I've got new motor mounts for this thing. I figure it shouldn't be that difficult to swap them out. Nice little afternoon project sometime. But, I mean, you, all the suspension's nice and tight. Axles aren't loose on the springs. But I do have that exhaust on the passenger side there that only got one bolt on that manifold with the flange there. This is, no, this isn't Broadway. Broadway's down yet. Got to make a rake turn up here. That's just so nice having this thing driving. Make it to the cruise to Colby this year. Thinking about it, but just had stuff to do. I think it was wet that weekend. Man, sure did a lousy pull out. about other stuff not paying attention to the road. Let's see if we can shoot across after this little blue car up here. What is it? Nissan? Toyota? Looks like a Nissan. Suffered. Fiesta ST. That's going to be a quick little car. Looks good in white. I looked at those when I was looking at the cruise. Look at the Focus. I like the Focus hatchback. Making a cruise. There's a black one up there. Those Fiestas are nice little cars. Ford did good with those. But I'm very happy with my Chevy Cruze. Checking out the new ones here. I like mine better. I like the styling better on the older ones. Let's sneak over because we're going to want to make a right turn into the parking lot here. A few 
lights. And yes, oh, a uh, classic truck rescue. They had a buddy coming over from the Netherlands and found this 74 Lincoln Continental Mark IV. And he decided he was going to buy that to drive around the West Coast and then ship it back. <coughs> well, he decided he didn't want it, but the Rick, the guy, went down and picked it up for him. That's a nice, clean car. An interior with brand new, all original, bought it from the original owner. Never said what the mileage was on it, but big old 460 under the hood, ran beautiful. Paint was a little faded, but I mean, no dents. Had all the original hubcaps, all the trim was there. The vinyl top was in beautiful shape. It was a nice dark blue, dark blue leather interior, white top. Neat car. Big old land yacht. Action. So this hump in the road straight ahead is a brand new bridge they just put in. This is kind of a point of contention between the city of Everett and Burlington Northern Santa Fe Railroad runs right underneath it. The bridge was what, 100 and some odd years old and it was falling apart pretty bad and the city wanted the railroad to pay for it because the railroad, that's where the bridge was put in to go over the railroad tracks. And the railroad says, yeah, no. I think they wound up kicking some money for the project. But I like the uh, side railings they put up there with, I'm guessing those are lights on top. Duran Duran's coming to Xfinity Arena. I don't think I'll go. And there it is again. Plunk, plunk, plunk. It's got something rolling around in this box. We're going to have to investigate. And that was the new bridge. So the auto electric place is right behind Taco Bell. He said. It's right over there somewhere. Staying up there with the old, uh, what they call that, the uh, Hirsch rental car stripes, black with gold. Sounds like a V6. So the hobby store, there it is again. Lightning in front. I think we'll just put it right here. Yeah. 
Alrighty, back in a few. This is definitely going to take a little bit longer to get the sandwiches. Alrighty, nice little 10 minute visit in there. So it started to figure there. Just a little bit of heat sink on that starter or something. I need to do a little big heat wrap on it. reaching for a clutch pedal and a floor shifter there for a second. <laughs> so I walked up to the truck, saw a puddle underneath it, I thought, oh crap, what's leaking? Yeah, just a little bit of water. Not from the truck, just a water puddle that must have been there just before I parked it. Uh, we're going to have to get into the mounts on this thing. Solidify the exhaust. This guy wants to make a left. Or right, well, I'm making a left. I got three magazines, about another packet of brushes. I got these nice uh, straight cut brushes that put a nice fine line on model stuff. I'm still working on that Oldsmobile. Made a little bit of progress on it. Got a couple of videos, but I haven't put them up yet. a little bit of interior work on it but I want to get the body sprayed that'll be the next video I post I think and fuel gauge is working I could run down to what's we call it fuel place and top this thing up with ethanol free but all this traffic. Uh, what side's the filler out of this thing? Passenger side. Yeah, that clunk's got me a little worried again. working loose and tightening itself back up and hopefully it's just that exhaust flopping around. I noticed that yesterday when I was washing it, it wiggles quite a bit. So. It's worse the harder you are on the throttle. Yes, and it's not very cheap. Well, now it's raining. It came on pretty quick. Okay, that was expensive. It's 319 a gallon. Apparently my gas gauge isn't working quite right. So I was showing a little below a half tank. This thing should have, I think it's a gallon tank. Go back and double check. But I put 22 gallons into it before it topped off, so $72. I mean, it's full now. It well, might be working all right. Here. So now we're going to cruise on home, park this thing so I can eat my sandwich, 
the rain is here now, so no playing outside tonight. While I was sitting there fueling it up, I put my foot on the exhaust, exhaust pipe on the passenger side, and I wiggled it with my foot, and you could hear it going thump, thump, thump underneath the rig, so I think that's my thunking noise. It does feel like it's coming from the right-hand side there, so... Hopefully, 400 bucks, get that exhaust taken care of. Get a nice Flowmaster on there, get a good sound out of this thing, one that I like. There's a lot of people that like the sound of this truck, but it's not theirs, it's mine, so. May even bring it back more to a stock sound. So this vintage Chevy truck has always had a nice exhaust note even from the factory. I remember dad's truck, his blazer, and I remember that 94. They both sounded pretty nice. They just enhanced the 94 with a nice exhaust. Mom doesn't like them, says they're too loud. But then we'll have Flowmasters on the Chevy Cruze, we'll have Flowmasters on the 63 Chevy, and we'll have Flowmasters on this. And I need to Get that 84 back on the road, and maybe next year I'll do a pair of Flowmaster mufflers with it and get the good sound out of that truck, too. And just to keep you guys entertained with a long video, we'll just keep you rolling all the way to the house. Playing around with those security cameras a little bit. I'm pretty happy with those. I haven't tried downloading anything yet. But... To see what the replay quality is going to be like. Crazy neighbors still over there. friend or whatever was over they've been working on that SS a little bit here and there had the garage door open hood up on the truck and it was up that way all night and then this morning I heard her coming out she's cussing up a storm F and garage was left open all F and night oh, the dumbass that was out there doing stuff so Must be something going on at the arena tonight Those names, July 23rd. Look at the sweet rentals. Yeah, some bunch of fight crews coming. I don't know what that was, but something rolled across the back. Lunch is sounding really, really, really good because I don't think I even had any breakfast this morning. What did I say it was when I... I guess I didn't say in this video when I left the house. It was about 1.30 or so when I started doing a couple of videos. So I don't know, I'm probably pushing 3 o'clock now. I don't have a watch on me and no clock in this truck. So oh, we'll just jump on the freeway, zip on home. No outside plan. Watch, I'll get home and dude will be ready to meet for the for the bumper. Which is fine. Turn around and go pick that up. Maybe I'll do a separate video tomorrow or tonight showing you what I got if I get it. If he calls. Like I said before, I'm not pushing it anymore, so if he doesn't contact me, he obviously doesn't want to sell it that bad. And that's just an appearance item for my sake, so I don't have to have one. Chrysler. I'm no 
know you can do it. If I had a little bit of free time tomorrow, maybe trying to wax this truck. Not that I'm driving down wet, dirty roads. for another time. Whatever my electric buffer is, should probably hit it with that. on that fuel gauge, it went down a maybe an eighth of a tank. Or not quite an eighth. So this thing's not too bad on fuel. $72. Okay, you want beer? No, nope, no beer. I'm driving. Oh, good. No crash. No crash. Smart man. It was funny. Uh, 
I like characters like that. I work with a bunch of them at the Boeing Company. It makes the day more fun. Nice looking Challenger beside us here. You're probably not seeing it. Nice gray, black stripes, red pinstriping around the black racing stripes. Some black wheels. Rather drive a K5 Blazer. Pretty good little shakedown cruise. We might just try driving it back into work here this week. Nah, I should hold off. I should hold off. We should get some more stuff done to her. Or at least the windshield. right there at least I'm sure I haven't called yet to price anything out we have a mobile guy come out and do it I was thinking about doing a little brake stand there just to see if the truck would but nah let's get the tune up done first let's get her running good let's get the exhaust taken care of and we'll see if you'll spin some tire. Thanks for riding along with me. If you don't like the long video, sorry. If you do, you're welcome. The lights are off. Let's go take our stuff inside, have lunch, and read some magazines. We'll catch you all later. Bye-bye.